Who's there? for you to get out. What do you want? I want you to die. You remember Rachel Hanlon, don't you? This is for what you did to my sister. Leave me alone. Right. I want you to feel the same way Rachel did when you made her beg for her life. Please, I had a problem. I know all about your problem. I heard about your problem every day in court. But you're all cured now. You got a whole new life. You know where my sister is? She's rotting in the ground. No! <laughs> Tell the police. You're gonna tell them we broke in here and you killed us in self defense? They're not gonna buy that coming from you. They're gonna know all about those two people you murdered. And they're gonna know all about your little vacation in Newbridge. What are you doing? You calling the cops? I'm calling Sheriff Mitchell. Tell the sheriff I want to talk to him when you get him on the line. Shut up. I want to tell him you abducted me and my girlfriend. And how you butchered her. And how she just happened to be sisters of one of those two people you murdered. You don't know what to do now, do you? You're all fucked up. But I guess that's normal for you, isn't it? Shut up! I'm sure they still have your old bed waiting for you. I'm never going back there. You're going back there, all right? Only this time, they're not gonna let you back out. I told you to shut up!
fine. And you didn't hear me knocking? I was sleeping. Your mom asked me to check up on you. I was out this way, and I just thought I'd stop and see how you were making out. I'm fine. Well, that's good to hear. What the hell happened here? It's broke. Well, hell, a blind man can see that. What happened? Somebody tried to break in or something? No, I, I did it yesterday when I came home from work. I, I forgot my keys. Well, you best get it fixed. Anybody been bothering you? No. How about at work? No. Well, that's good. And that's why I took you down there in the first place. Tom's a good man. He'll keep an eye out for you. Speaking of which, what time are you supposed to be in there? Seven. It's already 7.30. You better get ready. I'll drive you in. Sure. You're late again. Hey. Hi, Melissa. How's your day off? It was okay. Yeah, that's kind of how mine was. Went shopping, went for a walk. I have no life. What'd you do? I went fishing. Did you catch anything? I caught some bass. That's good, right? Something wrong? No. You sure? I can tell when something's bothering you. I'm okay. Melissa, you're up. Thanks, Paul. Hey, if you ever need anyone to talk to, I'm a good listener, okay? Get your apron off. Do you even need to ask him what's wrong? What could be right with him? It's a scramble, not fried. to tell you was I saw you yesterday at the country store and I I waved to you I could have sworn you saw me I guess you didn't no I I didn't huh. Melissa this food's not getting any warmer yeah I'll be right there okay see ya hey David you got tables out here come on let's go Hey. Hey. 
It's been so busy, I haven't had a chance to talk to you. Oh, wow. Noticed you didn't come home last night. Yeah, I stayed at Paul's. What did you do? Danny came over. The stalker? He's not a stalker. He calls you all the time. You can't go anywhere without him tagging along. When you do go out alone, he somehow manages to appear wherever you're at. But you're right. Maybe stalker is too strong of a word for him. He's not that bad. Whatever. He's helped me through the past year, Laura. You know that. He's been a good friend. He wants to be more than friends. I know. Can you say stalker? doing here? I just wanted to see you. <laughs> That's sweet. Shouldn't you be at work? I'm going in late. It's not a big deal. Danny, you need this job. What? You said you were tired of living with your father. You know, you're starting to sound like my father. I'm serious. Look, the reason I wanted to see you is because I've been doing some thinking. Uh-oh. Yeah. Well, anyway, I know that tomorrow's not going to be a very good day for you. Uh, no, it's not. So I was thinking that maybe we could just go up to the falls for the day and get away from everything. You know, just hang out. I appreciate what you're trying to do, but you know, I told you last night, I, Danny, I just need to be by myself tomorrow. Look, I think that you just need to get past this. Well, Melissa, you know how I feel about you. And it seems like you feel the same way about me, but you keep blocking me out. Look, I know you're afraid to get close to someone again, but... What can I get for you? I just think you need to get on with your life. Get on with my life? Yeah, you know, it's been a year since John died, and I still don't have any answers. I know. No, you don't know. I've had to deal with this every day since, and I, I'm not doing a very good job at it. But this has nothing to do with you. That's not what I'm saying. Melissa. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? You don't know how to speak? <laughs> Melissa. Laura, could you ask her to come out here? Why don't you leave her alone, asshole? I wasn't trying to hurt her. I'm fine. Are you sure? Yeah. Lisa? I'm fine. I'm sorry. Why are you saying you're sorry? Look, I'm, I'm the one who should be sorry. The last thing I wanted to do was upset you. Yeah, no. I was just trying to say that it's okay for you to move on. I You need a ride? Tom needs me to stay late. Don't let him keep you too long, all right? I won't. Good night. Good night. Good night, Tom. The service was so good, I figured I'd uh, come back for dinner. Too.
Hey, you work at Tom's Diner, right? Yeah. Well, looks like we're going the same way. You want a lift? I'm okay. You sure? All right. to insist. You don't remember me, do you? I'm Detective Mike Clayton. I was one of the detectives assigned to your case. What's the matter with you? You don't know how to speak? You better start talking, because my patience is wearing thin. I remember you. Do you remember what we talked about? When it was just you and me? No. You told me someone else was there that night. At the lake. You told me someone else killed those kids. Oh my God, Kevin! Stop it! Rachel, I'm here to David. What I told you wasn't true. There wasn't someone else. Is that the way you remember it? Or did your doctor convince you of that? Dr. Magruder says sometimes I think things are real when they're really not. Yeah, I know what he said. I also know that you were found at the crime scene with a murder weapon in your hand. And with your history of mental problems, case closed, right? but I was never convinced that you did it. So I did some checking around at the store you and Rachel worked at. One of her friends told me that she'd been uh, screwing around on her boyfriend. What? I never did find out who that other person was. She wasn't like that. I know she wasn't. She made a mistake, so she broke it off with him. I'm sorry. It's over. She went to the lake that night to tell her boyfriend the truth. Do you remember Jim Hanlon? He's Rachel's father. His wife reported him missing two weeks ago. During the trial, Rachel's family threatened to kill me if I ever got out. I know they did. That's why I came down here to make sure you were all right. After I saw you this morning, I went out to your house to look around. And this is what I found. I ran the plates. It's registered to Jason Malik. He's Kelly Hanlon's boyfriend. <laughs> Kelly Hanlon is Rachel Hanlon's older sister. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Well. This piece of shit's been here all day. 
Everything seemed to check out at your house. So where are they? I don't know. They didn't come after you looking to even the score? No. I need you to tell me what happened. They broke into my house, and they tried to kill me. And you didn't call for help? What were you thinking? Christ, David. Did you kill them? I didn't mean to hurt them. It, it just happened. So where are their bodies? Are they still in your house? No. So where are they? What did you do with their bodies? I don't want to go back to Newbridge. And you think covering this up is going to keep you out of there? Come on, get back in the car. Go. over there. David, get help. Are you all right? Are you sure this is the road? Well, I just talked to the sheriff up in Martinsville. He said there's no Mike Clayton on his staff, and nobody by that name worked on your case. So are you sure that that was the man's name? I'm sure. So where is he? He was right there. And where's the two vehicles you told me about? I don't know. You have to be certain about this. I told you what happened. You find anything? Nothing. Well, keep looking. Uh, 
Are you sure something really happened here? I was concerned when you missed our session. I'm glad I came over here to check up on you. Have you been taking your medication? Yes. Every day? Every day. I'm not lying about what happened. I know you're not lying, David. It's what you perceive as being the truth. That's the problem. I don't know what to make of what you're telling me. You were released from Newbridge because of the progress you made with your disorder, as well as the understanding of what you did to those kids at the lake and why. Not what someone else did, what you did. I didn't kill them. Don't make me think I hurt her. I wouldn't make you think that. You're going to put me back in the hospital, aren't you? I would only do that if I felt you were a danger to yourself or to someone else. Let's make sure it doesn't come to that, hmm? What did you do? Hello?
about time you finished with that shower. I wasn't in there that long. You fell asleep in there again, didn't you? No. Mom, what are you doing here? Aunt Sharon dropped me off. I figured I'd get away from her for a few days and spend some time with my son in my old house. Looks like you've done some work out here. I started to a little bit. Mom, I can finish that. You shouldn't be out here in your condition. What condition? This brings back a lot of memories. When you were little, we'd come out here every spring and you'd help me do this. But you'd never pull out the entire weed. You'd always get the top part of it. Then you'd look at me and say, Mommy, did I do it right? <laughs> and I didn't have the heart to tell you you didn't. You were so cute. You never know by looking at this garden now how much love and attention I gave it. The only thing you can see now is what happened to it when I let it go and the weeds got a hold of it. Things never turn out the way you think they're going to. You should probably get ready for work. Mom, I can stay here and help you. No, don't lose your job because of me. I'll be fine out here. Go on now. Someone there? Hello?
are you? Who 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 are you? on my way to work. Are you all right? No. He was my husband. I'm sorry. We met at a party my sophomore year of college. And, uh... I knew that night he was the one. And we got married a year later because I got pregnant. I had to quit school and I started working at the diner. We didn't have anything, you know. We were happy. I lost him a year ago today. What happened? John was on his way home from school, and a car hit him. And instead of checking to see if he was OK or stopping to help him, they just, they just left him there. I loved him so much. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if I'd been able to be stronger and keep myself together, maybe I, I might not have lost the baby. When you lose someone you care about, it's hard to let go. I don't want to let go. I, Danny keeps saying that moving on doesn't mean that I have to forget. Maybe he's right. I know he's right. But maybe if they can catch the guy who did this, then... Maybe I can begin to heal. I've had enough of this fucking shit. Daddy, stop! You better stay away stop from Stop it! You hear me? What is the matter with you? What's the matter with me? Everywhere you go, he happens to show up. He lives around here. He's walking to work. Oh, God, that's bullshit. You know what he did up at Martinsville. What are you doing here? Look, I just wanted to see if you were all right. I'm fine. Didn't I tell you I didn't want to see you today? I just came here because I care about you. Problem here, kids? Yeah, Dad, there is a problem. This fucking retard keeps following her around. Knock it off. Is that true, Melissa? No, I bump into him here and there. It's a small town. It's not that small. Aren't you supposed to be at work? Gus said he doesn't need me till 9. Yeah. So I guess that little talk we had the other day went right in one ear and right out the other. Which one was that? The one about you getting your head out your ass and keeping a job for more than a month. Look, maybe we should do this at home.
I'm sorry, Melissa. We will deal with this later. You're spending a little too much time with this young lady, don't you think? David, you want to come over to the car with me? Well, I guess they're expecting you at the diner. Yeah. All right. Well, get in. We'll talk on the way. Please just leave me alone. Come on, Melissa. Danny, just go. All right, fine. I appreciate if you didn't say anything about that little mess back there. I won't. Thanks. You know, I was just thinking about your daddy the other day. We were best friends, me and him. We went to the academy together. We joined the force together. Ah, there was a little rough spot for that stuff between me and your mom and him, but. We got over it. I remember when I was little. I'd wait for my dad by the front door to come home from work. And we'd go out in the yard and play baseball. My mom was happy then. Before that night. Yeah. David, I've thought about that night a thousand times. So have I. Can you tell me what happened? My mom, she never really... Yeah, I understand. Well, we were out on patrol, and a call came in that somebody broke into the deli. Your dad got there first. He went in, and... Well, when I got there, that son of a bitch was standing over him with that knife. I fired two shots. He went out the back, and somehow just got away. My friend, your father, died on that deli floor, and all I could give him was a description of a guy in a mask. Just standing there, watching her. When I chased him through the woods, it seemed like he was trying to get away from me. But he led me to the cemetery. It was like he wanted me to see him watching her. Did you tell her about him? I wanted to, but I don't even know if he's real. I mean, I could hear his footsteps on the ground when I was chasing him, and I could, I could see him looking back at me, and at one point I actually felt him as he knocked me aside and ran past. How does that make you feel? How do you think that makes me feel? A part of me wants what happened last night to be real so I can prove I'm not crazy. But if it did happen, then someone died. But if it didn't, then... Then perhaps a voluntary stay at Newbridge is necessary to get you back on your medication. I don't need to go back to Newbridge. David, you made great progress when you were in there. But I have a life now. For the first time in a long time, I have a life. If the past could just stop coming after me. 
How is the past coming after you? When Sheriff Mitchell drove me from the cemetery to the diner, we talked about my father and the, the night he died. On the front page of the morning newspaper, there was this drawing of a, a mask my father's killer wore. The person from last night and this morning was wearing that same exact mask. That's not some new revelation, David. We discussed that years ago. You don't remember that? The police sketch you saw in the newspaper as a child stayed with you in your subconscious. And as you grew older and your schizophrenia became progressively worse, you hallucinated that your father's mass killer murdered Rachel Hanlon and her boyfriend. So in your mind, the same person was responsible for destroying your life once again. But once you were in Newbridge and on your medication, you realized that you were responsible for what had happened. You were in love with Rachel. You followed her everywhere she went, and she told you to leave her alone. And that resulted in the violence that night, as well as the mental breakdown you suffered. But what if you're wrong? What if this person really does exist, and I, I don't do anything to warn or protect Melissa? Listen to me very carefully. He doesn't really exist. It's all in your mind. You have to stay away from her. See it hanging there. I'll buy you another one. You got a broom so I can clean this stuff up for you? Forget about it. I'll take care of it. I just wanted to come over here to apologize for this morning. But I was wrong for acting like that. I know it wasn't the time or place. I just saw him standing there and I snapped. Think about it, Melissa. He murdered two people. And you're driving home at night by yourself. Look, you don't have to watch over me 24-7, okay? I'm sorry, I guess I just screwed it all up. Danny. Why don't we go inside and talk? Are you 
you all right? I had a nightmare. You want to talk about it? It was just about the past. No one can escape their past. Not you, not me, not anyone. Sheriff Mitchell was talking about that today. He said something happened between the three of you. Speaking of the past. Well, what was he talking about? Well, he was probably talking about the way our relationship ended. What relationship? Oh, David, it was so long ago. I don't know why Frank even brought it up. Mom, what relationship? Frank and I were high school sweethearts. We were actually more than that. He wanted to marry me, but I didn't love him. I didn't love him because I loved your father. There was always something special between us, even when we were kids. So what happened? I broke up with Frank to be with your father. Frank didn't talk to us for years. Oh, but that's enough of that. Why don't you try to get some sleep? I'll try. I love you, David. I love you too, Mom. talk to you? Sure. I just wanted to apologize for yesterday. Danny had no right to do what he did. It's okay. He's not like that. You know, he just has it in his head that he has to protect me from the world or something. He's not a bad guy. He's, he's He was a regular when I started, and he come in all the time for lunch and we'd just joke around and and after John died we became close friends and I I don't think I could have made it through this past year without him. Danny's out there. Okay, I'll be right there. Okay, I'm gonna go. Are we okay? You know, I think Danny may be right. And I'm the last person in the world that would defend him. But you know what David did. I know. And that doesn't creep you out. No, I mean, he just talks to me. You're the only one he talks to. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, it's hard for me not to be nice to people, you know? I'm not like you. You're not a bitch? That's not what I meant. Look, I'm just saying that I would stay away from him if I were you. Hey, that's nice. Oh, I thought that is nice. We have the greatest things in this place. 
I don't know, Laura. I don't know what to do. Just tell him to leave you alone. I'll do it. No, I'm not talking about David. I'm talking about Danny. Oh. I don't know. I mean, he's like, I mean, he's a nice guy, right? And he likes me and he cares about me and... But you don't have any feelings for him. But maybe it's me, you know? Maybe I'm not letting myself move on. Don't second guess the way you feel. I did it once and it was the biggest mistake I ever made. I never loved my ex, but I convinced myself that I did because he was nice and he was funny and he was good to me. The only good thing in that relationship is I got the house, right? It's gonna be all right. <laughs> Look, I gotta go get Paul. The loser's car is in the shop again. <laughs> See you tonight. I'll be there later on. Doing? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. So you grabbed me from behind? What are you doing in my house? I was gonna make you dinner. Dinner? You broke into my house to make me dinner? I didn't break in, Melissa. I, I used the spare key you keep out front. I, I parked my car down the road because I wanted to surprise you. You just got here before I could start it. I never said you could come in here whenever you feel like it, Danny. We're not a couple. We're just friends. Well, maybe it's time we stop being just friends. And maybe it's time you stop being afraid. I'm not afraid. That's not what's holding me back. I have to be honest with you, Danny. I don't have the same feelings for you that you have for me. I'm sorry. So do you lead on all your friends? That's not fair. It's not? I never said we'd be anything more than friends. That's bullshit. 
You've known all along the way I feel about you, and you wait till now to tell me this? What's going on? It's none of your fucking business. Excuse me? What'd you say? You heard me, motherfucker. <laughs> Fuck you, man! <laughs> This shit isn't over, man. Good. Just... That's it. Right. Stay away from All right. me. All right, fine. I'm fucking gone. <sighs> David. David, what are you doing? David, I'd like to discuss this with you. Now come on now, David, Sheriff Mitchell, open up. If I can't get him to sign himself in, I'll take it up with the board. David, is someone at the door? No, Mom. There's no one there. done this at your house instead of here. You want to tell me what you were doing at Melissa's house yesterday? I was just walking by, making sure she was okay. But Doc Magritte here says you've been following around town. Uh, I was just making I sure... I understand, David. You think she's in danger. But you can't do that. Let the police handle this. You don't think someone else wants to hurt her. You think it's me. David, I have to get to work. Just hold on. I'm not gonna hurt her. David, don't go in there! Melissa, I have to talk to you. Come on, let's go. I didn't kill Rachel or her boyfriend. The person that killed them, he's the one following you. David, please! I know they told you it's me, but it's not me! I saw you in the woods, watching me. I was just trying to protect you. From who? If somebody's following me and it's not you, who is it? It's Danny. My son? Is that who you mean? No, David, it's you. And I want you to leave me alone. Listen. Let's go. Now. Are you sure something really happened here? I feel you need to sign yourself back into Newbridge. If somebody's following me and it's not you, who is it? It's Danny. I'm sorry. It's over. I never did find out who that other person was. just so tired all the time now. Danny killed Rachel. What? Sheriff Mitchell's son, he, he killed them both. Now he's gonna kill Melissa. David, what's going on? When I was walking home from work the other day, Detective Clayton picked me up. Who's Detective Clayton? He's one of the detectives that worked on my case. He told me that Rachel was cheating on her boyfriend, only he never found out who the other person was. It was Danny. I saw him in the store with Rachel that day. She told him it was over, and that night he killed her. You're sure it was him? I'm sure. Melissa told him to leave her alone last night. He killed Rachel because she told him it was over. 
He set me up. He wanted me to see him following Melissa around with that mask on, just in case it didn't work out with her. He's been setting me up all along. He knew they wouldn't think someone else was following her. They'd think it was me. Oh, when Detective Clayton stopped on the side of the road, Danny wanted me to see him stab him. That's why he didn't come after me. He wanted me to tell them what I saw because he knew they wouldn't believe me. Why didn't you tell me this? Because I didn't think it really happened. I went to get help, and when I got back, his body was gone. His car was gone. I thought it was all in my head. What about Frank and Dr. McGrew? Uh, they didn't believe me. Sheriff Mitchell called up to Martinsville, and, and he said there was no detective named Mike Clayton that worked on my case. Maybe you got his name wrong. I don't know. Maybe I did. I didn't hallucinate what happened. I know that now. It was real. Mom, Danny's gonna kill Melissa. And they're gonna think I did it, just like at the lake. But I'm not gonna let that happen. What do you think you're gonna do? You think you're gonna stop him? What happens if you don't? I don't want anything to happen to that girl. And I don't want you to go back to Newbridge for something you didn't do. I'm going back there anyway. For what? You didn't do anything. You don't understand. You've got to tell them what you just told me, David. I'll talk to Frank. He's not going to take my word over his sons. Well, then call Dr. Magruder and let him handle it. I'll call him if you don't want to. I'll call him. I'll talk to someone other than Sheriff Mitchell about what you told me. I'm not far from your house, so just stay where you are till I get there. I will. There's something else I have to tell you. I don't want to upset you, but you must listen to me. Sheriff Mitchell just called. He said they found Jim Hanlon's car in the Food King parking lot. Jim Hanlon? He's Rachel Hanlon's father. I know who he is. The police are on their way to your house. They're looking for him. So I don't want you to be alarmed when they show up. I won't. I'll take care of everything when I get there. My mom said you would. Is your mom there with you? She's here with me. Mom? Are you all right? Get up. Please, Mom. Don't do this to me. Please, Mom. Don't do this to me. Oh. Oh. Oh, you only Why did you have to kill her?
Dr. Magruder. Are you all right? I'm fine. I'm fine. What were you doing in the road? The killer's out here. What? David, he killed my mom. David. What? What the fuck are you doing here? There's someone in the house. Oh, is that right, you crazy, stupid fuck? Uh. Paul! Call the cops. Melissa! What are you doing here? We have to get out of here. What? He killed Laura and Paul. Laura and Paul are dead? Come on, we have to get out of here. What did you do? No, Melissa, it's not me. Stay away from me! You've got to believe me. Leave me alone! Melissa, please! Uh.
me. Why is this happening? I don't know. He's over there. Where'd he go? I don't know. What are you doing? So we have to get help. Seems like old times, doesn't it, David? You and me fighting over the same girl. What? David and I go way back, Melissa. Even before we were born, right? Your mom, my dad. He would have married her if she hadn't been fucking his best friend and got knocked up with you. You know, we never got over her. Is that why you set me up? I set you up because I could. That fucking whore Rachel was playing me and her boyfriend. There's no way I was gonna let that shit slide. I left you there with a murder weapon in your hand, and all you could do was tell the cops it was your father's killer that did it. I knew your shrink would have a field day with that. Danny, stop it! You need help. I need help? Look at you, you're a fucking mess. But you know what really pisses me off is I put a lot of fucking work into you. What I learned with Rachel is you never compete with anyone for a girl. So with you, I, I just took out the competition. John? You killed John. Hit and run. You and I were close before he died. But now that he's gone, look how close we've become. 
You never felt right to me. I never felt right to you. That's exactly why I started fucking with you. I knew you'd have to take the fall for me one more time. That's enough. Please, you have to help us. What's going on here? He's trying to kill us. Why didn't she dead? Why do you think? Christ, Danny, I told you not to call the station until she was dead. Oh, my God. Don't move. <laughs> it hasn't exactly worked the way we planned, Dad. You better clean this shit up quick. My boys are halfway here already. But you're the sheriff. How can you do this? I'll tell you. When Danny called the station, he said that everybody here was dead. And that David was trying to kill him. I got here first. You two were struggling. Sorry, David. I had no choice but to shoot you. At least that's how my report's going to read. Your doctor said you were having some kind of a relapse. I guess you were starting to imagine shit again. I'll find a detective's body out in the woods. And the two you have buried in your backyard. It all points to you. I still can't figure out why you buried him. What, did you think you killed him? It's a good thing I was watching you that night. It would have ruined all my plans if something happened. You know, Dave, the night that I killed your dad, I thought it was going to solve everything. But it didn't. All these years, I watched you grow up knowing that you're the reason that I lost your mother. Doesn't that just fuck with you? I thought you told me they were dead. They are dead. It's not my men. Dad! <laughs> Danny! <laughs> son's been shot, and he needs help. Now give me the gun. This isn't my fault. I know it isn't. I heard everything. I did what I thought was right. I know. This isn't my fault. husband soon enough. No!
Scheiße. Stay away from me. What's wrong?